Welcome to the Taylor May Tasty Podcast. I'm Taylor, retired serial quitter turned goal boss coach, speaker, and consultant. I believe a beautiful life starts with a beautiful mindset. Join me as we amplify confidence, resilience, and actionable tools on the road to quit quitting on you and your vision. You are worthy of your goals. So let's go get there. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Taylor May Tasty, the podcast. We are back with another 10 with Taylor series this week and I wanted to talk about the feeling of not being enough. This topic was brought up by one of my membership clients and I felt deeply it should be addressed on a scale where as many people as possible could listen to this topic because it is so important. So let me preface this by saying I actually hate the term not enough. When I think of the word enough, my mind goes to being done with something. The idea of I've had enough, right? Which brings me to why I think enough is a decision, not an amount. So with that being said, Even with the amount of mindset work I have done and studying the brain for my clients and business, for a few weeks I have felt inadequate and incompetent about something or other. From the way that I run my social media for my business to the way I actually run, uh, just feeling very unsure about the next steps in my business and my life. And on the days where it gets hard and it feels bad, I have to stop myself and breathe and journal to just really shake these feelings. All that to say, when I talk about different subjects and topics on here, I never want you to think that I am above any of these feelings. I have been right there with you. And there will always be people better than us and worse than us. And the most important thing that we need to ask ourselves is, am I improving? Without judgment, can you answer the question, am I improving? And that's going to look very different for everybody. Improving might look like getting the better job, getting the promotion. Improving might be, you know, I feel a little stagnant in life, but I'm still showing up to my monthly group coaching, or I'm choosing to get one-on-one coaching, or I'm choosing to go to therapy if the issues are a bit deeper, right? So your version of improving is going to look different from person to person. Now that I'm empowering you to own that feeling like you're not enough is a myth because enough is a decision. You get to decide that you are enough. Uh, You're born enough, right? It's not an amount. Then I want you to reflect on what does being enough mean to you? Where and when did feelings of inadequacy begin? And good enough for what? Good enough for whom? How much would you need to be to achieve? You know, what would you need to be or achieve to be enough? What would you have to get or be or or feel to be enough? We all have different opinions as to what is enough. And most people don't know how to define what they mean when they say they aren't enough. It's just a feeling that they want to be enough, but they're not sure how to actually define what enough would feel like or look like, right? And a lot of the time, we allow society to determine what enough means for us. And what I find interesting in my own life is that feelings of inadequacy usually tend to happen when I am level up. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but for example, when I was heavily into my weight loss journey, as I lost more, I started to feel like I wasn't enough because now I was comparing myself to a new, better, more strong, more efficient person and version of me, right? So being enough comes down to your belief of whether or not you think you're worthy. People who have a strong sense of love and belonging believe 
that they are worthy of love and belonging. That's it. They believe that they're worthy. And this starts with self-reflection. And once you are aware of the negative self-talk that's happening, you notice the negative statements that you say to yourself, right? And where does that negative self-talk come from? We receive all kinds of messages and programming throughout our lives that cause us to think the way that we do. Negative self-talk is really a combination of the negative things you have heard from others and those you have given yourself. The gift of this negative uh, self-talk really comes from either other people or ourselves and a lot of times unconsciously. And we uh, reaffirm those programmed thoughts and they become wired into our brain. And I have read a lot about how the brain works and studied it and researchers estimate we think 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And the brain doesn't know the difference between whether or not the statements are true or false. The brain reacts to the programs that are the strongest, aka the ones that are most repeated, right? And most of us understand that they're not completely true, but the problem is that the habit of saying them to ourselves over and over doesn't allow for us to understand that we are so much more than enough, right? It's the habit of regularly catching ourselves in the act of this inaccurate self-talk that matters, Like, for example, um, thinking I am not smart enough for this promotion, even though you're qualified, but for some reason your past and your brain are telling you the opposite because you have the habit of being overly critical with yourself, which could have been learned during your childhood, right? It's the same thing when someone compliments you on a job well done and you minimize the compliment, right? Saying, oh, I could have done better or this old thing, or whatever it is. Similarly, our poor past experiences and believing that the past repeats itself also plays into the feeling or the myth that we are not enough, right? I'm, you know, I'm not going to stick to this exercising because I've stopped before. And therefore, we believe that the past repeats itself. So we're not actually going to stick with this goal because we didn't before. Some of the triggers that I want you to look out for when this myth of not feeling enough is coming up for you would be comparison. Looking at your own errors or flaws and exaggerating them or mind reading, assuming that we know what other people are thinking without any real evidence. Like we often imagine the negative in those scenarios. Perfectionism, you believing that your best effort is not good enough or perfect, or you believe that perfection is attainable and therefore you're not hitting that. And so you're feeling the myth of not feeling enough, right? Or failing at something you have never done before. Like I used to not want to do new things because I did not want to not be good at it at first, right? And I thought that I should be perfect in everything that I did the first time and that if it didn't come natural to me, it wasn't for me. And then I started to realize and learn that this was irrational. And in order for me to get better at something, I had to be willing to fail and make mistakes and learn and try again. So are you humble and graceful enough to struggle your way through the beginning stages so you can grow and you can get stronger at it and you can get better? You know, in this corner of the world, we are all about being solution-oriented badasses. So if we are talking about the problem or the myth of not feeling like enough, then I want to offer some solutions that have worked for me in the past. And that is to start by reminding yourself that your feelings of quote-unquote not enough were learned. It's not objective or factual, even when it feels so instinctually true, right? 
and we can connect to the part of us that feels bad and offer it compassion like we would a child or a parent or a colleague or a friend or a pet. <laughs> um, I also want to remind you about the power of breathing, of your breath. So when this is happening, it can actually calm your nervous system and that can be with deep belly breaths. Five or six of them in a row, just deep breathing will actually calm your nervous system, give you a little bit more light in there so that you are thinking clearly and not within that storm of not enough. And I'm sure you knew this one was coming, but we can exercise to get adrenaline flowing and create a sense of empowerment. You can also journal about the trigger that caused the feeling along with affirmations reminding you how big of a badass you are. And then I want you to remember this phrase, compare and despair. So this is used in therapy, psychology, when the comparison comes into play, the despair comes into play as well. So when you catch yourself making comparisons to others, stop. It only hurts by fueling feelings and thoughts of quote unquote not enough, right? And that despair is really that complete loss and absence of hope. And when we let comparison win, when we let the not feeling like enough win, when we let the unworthiness win, we start to lose that hope in who we are, who we want to be, what we want to achieve. And in those moments, if you can utilize some of these tools to remind you how worthy you are, how deserving you are, how capable you are, then that's when the shift will start to happen. That is when we shift out of that comparison and out of that despair and we bring back that hope and we breathe back hope into our life, into our goals and into what our very next step is going to be and that we can even own that comparison still happens, the mind reading still happens, the perfectionism still happens, but we do it anyway because we're not scared of failing right? We are humble and graceful enough to struggle our way through the beginning stages so that we can grow and become better. All right, y'all, it is time for the quote of the episode. This quote is from Atticus and one of my favorites. The quote is, we drink the poison our mind pours for us and wonder why we feel so sick. End quote. Atticus. Take that into your week, your month, and maybe even your year and stop drinking your mental poison and ask yourself, am I improving? As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in my community. I'm so glad you showed up today and let's go get there. Look at you crushing it. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Tailor Made Tasty podcast. My hope is you always leave with a takeaway to implement in your own goal crushing journey. I would love if you could take a moment to leave a review. And if you're looking for a community of goal boss badasses just like you, be sure to check out tailormadetasty.com backslash membership. Thank you.